dorky daddies. Mm, how y'all doing? It's eggnog season, baby. Final Cut Pro 11 came out this week, and boy, am I not excited. Is it as much as we wanted? Probably not, but we got some really cool features. The first one, the headline feature, was the magnetic mask, and I made a video about that. Go watch it, I'll link it, or I don't know, just go find it. I was insanely impressed with how good the magnetic mask was. This is crazy. This is crazy. I cannot believe it. Especially when I compared it to the magic mask in DaVinci Resolve. It's really, really good. The second big headline feature is that we got auto captions in Final Cut Pro. So today, we're gonna test that. Hooray! Sync that audio. Alrighty, so I have a clip that I just shot that should be an example. We're going to, let's see, Hello, right, dorky. Let's see right here. Hello, dorky daddies. Okay, so here is my clip that I'm using to test this caption feature. Now, one big difference that I've seen and what I'm seeing so far with this feature is that in DaVinci Resolve, you can transcribe an entire timeline. You don't have to select clips. You don't have to do anything specific. That is really, really nice. You can generate captions for the whole timeline. It's smart enough to do it, even if there's music or anything else going on. DaVinci Resolve also lets you transcribe clips in the media pool, which Final Cut is not letting us do right now. Again, I'm, we're, we're gonna try to show this, but in a nutshell, from what I'm seeing and so far, like DaVinci is wiping the floor with Final Cut on this one. Hopefully this can still get better for Final Cut Pro, but like, you know, just like I'm calling a spade a spade, the magnetic mask, in my opinion, was faster and better than anything I've seen out of Magic Mask. Cool, Final Cut gets a win, but as far as caption goes, like, you know, you guys know me, I just want the best tool and I don't think Final Cut is anywhere close to what you can do in DaVinci. I, I know it's not. I know it's not, but let's take a look. So we have this clip. Now, again, this isn't a very complex example, but what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that this clip is selected. And if we had cuts here, so let's just make some cuts, even though I'm not going to really test that today, we need to then select all of the clips with the audio that we want to transcribe. Go up here to our little magic wand underneath and hit transcribe to captions. Now, this is very fast. It is insanely fast and as far as i can tell the results have been really good let's just take a quick peek here hello dorky daddies my name is jake and i love making videos as well as mostly editing videos and with that i love the vinci resolve and i love final spelled the vinci wrong final cut pro ironically wasn't capitalized you would think it would get that one right but all in all like transcription the the quality here is looking good enough for what i've come to expect like we'll compare it with davinci resolve but like the model here seems to be good. It seems to be getting it for the most part to be what I want it to be. So now the big question in my mind is in DaVinci Resolve, there's lots of customization. Again, we'll show that in a minute, but with these captions, it doesn't seem like there is much customization. And a big one being, it takes these big long blurbs. It's very closed caption formatted, which again is very like professional Netflixy. Like all of those guys are gonna love this. That's great. This is how they have to do it so it makes sense. But for all of us like internet editors, internet creators, this is gonna feel a little bit lacking. There's not a lot of customization here. So when I select these captions and I look in the inspector, I can definitely edit the caption text. So that is good, but I can't edit or I wasn't given any opportunity to edit how many words per caption chunk there were. And again, in DaVinci Resolve, you can have as little as one word. So every time a word is spoken, it throws up a new text element. This does not do that. Um, it looks like we can bold them, which is nice. We can italicize them, that's kind of nice. We can underline stuff. Uh, we can change the color. So we could do black and yellow, which feels a little bit more kind of what I'm used to. Um, there, the placement is either top or bottom. Yeah, that's, yes, can't. I wish I could put that exactly where I wanted it. Don't love that. Um, I don't have, I don't have a way to change the background. It's just black and then you can change the text. Uh, these arrows over here, I can go to the different ones. So you could change the text of each one and the color. That's kind of nice, but again, like I mostly use this for short form content. Like there's no way that anything like this is gonna fly in short form content. Like I might try it just to see, but depending on where it puts it, if it's at the bottom of a vertical video, it's gonna be blocked out by all of the social media crap at the bottom. You're not even gonna be able to see it. And if you put it at the top, it might be getting blocked by some notches. Like there's a sweet spot for text in vertical video. And I don't know, this just, this just ain't it. 
This ain't it. This ain't it. I need a thinking sip of coffee before this analysis. I do want to do like kind of a final summary of what I want to see from this type of technology, but let's first show DaVinci Resolve to give some of the context on the things that I'm going to ask for. All right, so we got DaVinci Resolve opened up. Let's drop this clip down here and let's go to where we did the same timing on the other one. I think this is correct. So in DaVinci Resolve to do what we just did, we go to timeline up at the top and we say, create subtitles from audio. Now again, a pop-up appears here. I've got lots of customization even out of the gate. I can select a bunch of different languages. I'm going to do auto. It'll recognize that it's English. Um, captions, you've got subtitle def defaults, which again, we're not going to touch those because we're going to go in and show that you can still change it after the fact. And then characters per line. I always just usually, because I'm doing the word by word captions like you would for vertical video, just set it down to one and it, it will do one word at a time. Sometimes if you're talking really fast, it'll squeeze in two, but generally speaking, this works really well. Uh, you can set the number of lines. That's really cool. And then you've got gap between subtitles. You could do a frame, so there's always like at least a little bit of a flash, and we'll just do that for this one. And then we hit create, and we'll see how quick this is. Um, yeah, initial impressions, it is slower than Final Cut Pro, which is what we were seeing with <laughs> Magic Mask, but still really fast. Like I would say being pretty picky on performance, but let's see what we got here. Hello, dorky daddies. My name is Jake and I love making videos as well as mostly editing videos. I mean, like already that's so much better, right? Like I would use this and then let's click on this track. In the inspector, we can go over to the track and look at this, we can, we can have a stroke. We can have the size, we can have line spacing, we can change the font to, you know, fonts that I actually like. We can, in, we can change the position. We can put these literally anywhere. So, you know, for short form videos, we can get them where they're not gonna hit all the social media, like crap, description type stuff. Uh, they can have a drop shadow if you want, um, which is really nice, you can have a background. So like you can do an outline color on the background. Um, let's do green. Um, <laughs> you can do uh, all kinds of different colors for the background with um, just the opacity being different. Like there's so much customization here. And again, like there's no animation customization, which everyone loves on trending stuff, but even this as it is, like this is something I use for short form all the time because I kind of like to have a mixture of like just captions you can read really easily and then my animated text. So, so yeah, there's just lots of really good stuff you can do in DaVinci Resolve with captions and it's all built in, you can customize them. And I just wish we were getting that for Final Cut Pro. Call a spade a spade, Jake. Like. Sure, it's great that we see this progress in Final Cut Pro 11. Love it. Keep working on it, Apple. I'm not complaining, but like comparatively, if you're doing captions, like is this this ain't it? <laughs> this ain't it yet. Use DaVinci Resolve or CapCut or one of the other tools like Final Cut Pro, unless you're doing like a long form video or documentary where you're doing Netflix closed captions. Like it's not here. It's not here, it's not good. Just being honest with you guys. So to kind of tie a nice little dorky bow on the end of this video, what would I like to see from Final Cut Pro? Again, we're seeing that performance, we're seeing that speed, we're seeing that accuracy. Everything I'm seeing from the functional, important pieces of this from Final Cut Pro is two thumbs way up. Uh, let's get some more customization on what those captions can look like, or maybe even just a button that can send those captions to titles. Now, that being said, we do need a feature where we can limit how big those captions are because just converting those to titles doesn't make it any easier. I've still got to chop those all down into one word things. We need some caption sizing on the amount of text per captions in Final Cut Pro. And then the second big feature, which again, I just assume is coming, like the writing's on the wall. If we're getting this feature, we should be getting this the same way we have it in DaVinci Resolve. I should be able to transcribe all of the media in my media folders for Final Cut Pro and search for words. You know, if I'm working on a big documentary and I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of remember he said something like this around a part that I care about. I need to go find it really quick. 
I want those features. You can do that in DaVinci Resolve for big, long projects that has saved me tons of time because it's so easy to go track down lines of things that people said. And again, from that, you can also highlight and do editing and drop that stuff into timelines really, really easily. Final Cut, just give us something like that. And again, with the technology we're seeing here and the speed at which it is working, should be totally doable, and I am so excited to see it. But guys, that's all I've got for this video today. Thank you so much for watching these. Again, such a great week. Lots of Final Cut, lots of Resolve. I am a happy boy. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go. I gotta get back to editing on this stuff, but hey, stay dorky, and I'll see you in the next one. Later. Yeah.